Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and the Joker has become the central figure of the DC Cinematic Universe, if there is such a thing anymore, since Joaquin Phoenix's Arthur Fleck Joker appears to be in a universe all his own, and no one seems quite sure what is and isn't canon from these films. Like, I think Superman is headless now? But while Joker and Batman are being recast, Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn is one daring attempt by DC to keep alive a well-liked element from the now ancient history of 2016 by starring her in the upcoming Birds of Prey film in February 2020. When we last saw Harley Quinn in the final scene of Suicide Squad, she appeared to be back in the embrace of that hunka hunka, the Jared Leto Joker. But now, according to the new Birds of Prey trailer, that Joker is very much out of the picture. The Joker and I broke up. So uh, what happened? Is it rude to ask? Are we never getting any explanation? And DC is just pretending, like many of us are, that Jared damaged Leto Joker never happened? I don't think so. I think the Joker is going to be a very important presence in Harley Lee's world in Birds of Prey, beyond just a doodle on a dartboard. In fact, if you paid close enough attention to that trailer, signs of the Joker show up all over the place. And all of this evidence points to a dark truth, that Harley's Joker is actually dead. If this is true, DC is apparently going to conspiracy level lengths to cover up this death in the most insane way possible. All to make Birds of Prey yet another cathartic emancipation that, I would argue, a number of DC films have actually given us. Let us break down this evidence for how DC secretly murdered the Joker in this episode of Total Conspiracy. Okay, first, let's start with what the Birds of Prey trailer has told us exactly. Harley narrates that she and the Joker broke up. She says that she wanted a fresh start, and she tearfully cuts her pigtails with a blue and pink hair dye that she got from diving into the Ace Chemicals vat in Suicide Squad to prove her devotion to the Joker. And reminding us how weirdly okay Gotham's chemists are with leaving massive uncovered vats of bubbling chemicals unattended. Please, somebody call OSHA before another supervillain gets formed. And if you look closely at the Birds of Prey trailer, there are shots of flaming rubble, which the final cast list shot reveals was Harley torching this same Ace Chemicals facility and strutting away like she's in a taste with music video. But what's odd about this is the Harley from Suicide Squad would never let herself go through this kind of breakup. Like when the Joker tried to dump her, she chased him down on a goddamn motorcycle, wrecked it, faced him down like Kevin McAllister, and shot a trucker. This ain't the girl you can break up with. She'll find you. And in the Birds of Prey footage, Harley's behavior at times directly contradicts this bold, fresh start. For example, among the many charms she wears in her wardrobe is a fish hook in the shape of a Joker J, very similar to the angular shape of his J tattoo. The fish hook implies Harley is still hooked on Joker's line, like she can't free herself from his hookup hookup. Also, the young Cassandra Kane has an arm cast with graffiti drawn presumably by Harley, including each of the queens of a deck of cards with each suit corresponding to a different woman in the group. But Harley actually took this deck of cards motif from her Joker. On his neck was a tattoo of the four aces. Again, that Joker lives on through Harley. But we should also acknowledge that every piece of Birds of Prey promotion we've seen has been highly deceptive. The recent trailer was clearly edited to soften adult language, with Harley's shirt pocket conveniently masking over a word, and then an awkward cut to a reverse shot to mask over what seems like one word but probably ain't. No one gives two shits who we are. And of course, the teaser in front of It Chapter 2 used the gag of a balloon pop to censor Harley. I'm so fucking over clowns. But is Harley really over her clown? Part of the deception of these promo clips has been a deliberate smokescreen between which shots show objective reality and which are fantasy delusions inside Harley's mind. I have speculated in past episodes that Harley is becoming the DC Cinematics equivalent to Deadpool, a violent R-rated jokester who breaks the fourth wall and uses humor to mask pain and suffering. Like, apparently, when Harley gets roughed up by Black Mask's gang, she gets through the pain by imagining herself in a dream sequence homage to Marilyn Monroe singing Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend and Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. So Harley Quinn is an unreliable narrator. We cannot trust what she tells us 
or what we see through her eyes. And that includes the words, the Joker and I broke up. But I'm gonna explain the most mysterious aspect of Harley Quinn and Birds of Prey. But before I continue, thanks to our sponsor, Skillshare, for helping us make this episode. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Explore classes in everything from photography and creative writing to marketing, productivity, and more. Its premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields to help you gain new skills and live your best Best life. As a screenwriter and filmmaker and storyteller in general myself, lately I've actually gotten into documenting all the new things that New Rockstars is going through. And since I'm not much of an editor, I've really gotten a lot out of the Skillshare course, video editing, transforming footage into evocative travel stories taught by Oliver Astrologo. And since my hand gets tired from journaling, I feel like I'm stitching together a documentary of my BTS. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. Blah. An annual subscription Skillshare is less than $10 a month. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this episode, you will receive a two month free trial just by clicking the link in the description below. Just go to skl.sh slash newrockstars16 or click on the link in the description. Okay, I think the most cryptic inconsistency with the Birds of Prey trailer is the song choice. Edith Piaf's Hymna a la Mort, if you know your French, which I don't have to look it up. This is a song of obsessive devotion with lyrics referencing dyeing my hair blonde and stealing fortunes just because her lover tells her to. The kinds of things that Harley absolutely did for Joker when they were still together, but very much at odds with what Harley says she's feeling in Birds of Prey. But to find the true secret message of this song, so much gets illuminated when you look at the history of why P.F. recorded it. P.F. dedicated this song to the love of her life, French boxer Marcel Serdan, with whom she had a short, turbulent, scandalous romance, since Serdan was an already married father of three, much like the kind of short, turbulent, scandalous romance that Joker and Harley had. P.F. famously recorded Hymne à l'Amour after Serdan tragically died in a plane crash to come see her. The song's legacy is that of a love song for a dead man. In fact, in the biopic of Edith P.F., La Vie en Rose with Marianne Cotillard, this song is introduced with the heartbreaking scene of P.F. learning that Serdan has died. She first dreams that he came home to her with a morning embrace, but as she prepares his breakfast, she learns the truth from others, and she returns to her bedroom to realize that he was never there. She dreamt it. Her man was dead. And if you think about it, it's pretty wild how similar this could be to the last time we saw Harley and her Joker together in Suicide Squad. In the final scene of that movie, Harley is alone in her prison cell, preparing breakfast, and then boom. A gang and police tactical gear break her out, led by, well, it's printed on a suit, Hunga Hunga, a man whom Harley assumed died in a helicopter crash back in Midway City, but miraculously resurrected without explanation here. They embrace, he says, let's go home, before their faces ignite into neon and we jump into the credits. But doesn't this seem a bit nuts? Harley is locked in a maximum security prison. As Amanda Waller said, she locked these criminals in a hole and threw away the hole. Whatever that means. If the Joker was this capable of busting her out, why does he wait until now? And if disguising himself and his gang in SWAT gear was key to this infiltration and breakout, why does his SWAT gear have his freaking name on it? Perhaps Birds of Prey director Kathy Yan took a cue from the song lyric that plays at the top of the Suicide Squad scene, the opening line of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. Is this a real life? Is this just fantasy? Kind of a landslide, no escape from reality. Excuse me, I'm gonna go sing the rest of this song and I'm back singing it, I love it. Okay, this entire prison escape with Harley and Joker could be, as Queen hinted, just fantasy. Her lover, like PF scandalous lover, Serdan, actually died in an aviation accident. This shock has caught her in a landslide. Another lyric that reflects PF's mournful ode, the blue sky over us can collapse on itself and the ground can really cave in. And to cope with this tragic loss, Harley Quinn has fantasized an escape from reality, or as this movie's title suggests, a fantabulous emancipation. And it's that emancipation that will continue throughout Birds of Prey as she struggles to see her dead ex-lover as a boyfriend she simply broke up with. A lie that's easier for her to cope with. That drawing of him on her wall that she throws knives into already has red X's over the eye and the mouth. She is knifing a corpse as if it still needs to be killed. Her Joker is so alive to her that she still even hears his voice, which if you're listening closely to the Birds of Prey trailer, a voice that seems to be that of Black Mask actually sounds a bit like Jared Leto. You need me, you need me, you need me. 
but that ex-boyfriend is a ghost, haunting Harley's fantabulous fantasy as she struggles to live in a reality with Tay Swift style closure and a fresh start instead of the tragic truth that she never got to say goodbye to the object of her obsession. In the DC Cinematic Universe can use this death as a convenient way to sweep into the rubble of Midway City, a Joker that fans aren't too eager to see again, and chalk up all the canonical confusions of Suicide Squad to the mere delusions of a damaged mind. A murder cover-up that we know is actually Total Conspiracy. Do you think Harley's Joker from Suicide Squad is dead, or could he still be alive? Comment down below with your thoughts, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVOTS, and to make episodes of Total Conspiracy like this a regular weekly thing on this channel, and to help us continue building up this temporary setup to our aspirational venture, New Rockstars Digital Studios, with all kinds of exciting new content for you guys, please, please consider becoming a patron, and click the link to our Patreon page in the description below. Patrons will get early access to content, exclusive premium breakdowns, and more special rewards. Just click that link in the description below to our Patreon page for more details. And thank you so much to all of our current or past patrons, the ones who are super, super generous, and they deserve a special shout out. Look at all these names. I love all you guys. Thank you for joining me. And hey, even if DC didn't have this exact plan in mind for the Leto Joker, hey, you know, feel free to use it.